Good morning. I'm Chuck Hutchins with Reed Yacht Sales. I'm from the LaSalle Group in uh, Michigan. I'm just north of Toledo, Ohio. Been working with them for over 40 years, and today I'm in uh, sunny Pittsburgh. I'm here to show Mr. Shoop how to uh, use his new Ranger 31. Here is the hatch opening. You notice it clears everything, so you don't really have to worry about doors being closed. Uh, the hatch will open past that. Even when we have the carpet out here, it will lift the carpet. Uh, it, the carpet's coming. And once, oh, hold it right there, Robin. Remember not to take it all the way to the very stop. Yep. Okay. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll draw an actual black line on the cylinder, just a little bit before the stop. Okay. <laughs> it's a D4 Volvo uh, diesel, and it's a great motor. It does everything very well. She's very fuel efficient, very quiet, uh, very strong engine. But as far as service, it is probably one of the easiest engines I've ever worked with. So I'm going to point out a few things for Mr. Shoup here that uh, he'll need to maintain during the season. Uh, really, you just look in here every sporadically. Um, if you're using it a lot, you want to kind of keep an eye on it, make sure she's not leaking oil, fluids, or anything like that. And she tells on herself. If there is anything on the peripherals, you'll see, every now and then you may see a little bit of fluid mm -hmm. that leaks out from the heat exchanger or the actual chamber here. The capture bottle is built in, so sometimes it just weeps a little bit and you'll see a little bit of antifreeze. Nothing to be too concerned about. Just mop it up, and if it becomes a big puddle, I need to know about it. Okay? Okay. But at this point, uh, she's purged, everything's ready, and I'm going to get right down there with her. First thing we're going to do is this is the dipstick for the main engine, and there's a little clip right here. You release that clip, you lift that up. Check your oil level. It should be nice and clean right up on the hash marks, and that's the end of that. The only thing you want to remember is when you push this back in, clip that. If this is loose, this will spill oil. I once had a phone call 70 miles away, my engine's leaking oil, and that's a panic for us. We, we rolled now. And we, I get to the boat, and I did that. So that was a 70 mile panic ride that I didn't need to take. Oil filters. There are two different oil filters on here. They look identical, but there are two different numbers, two different filters. You can't mix and match them. One hole is larger than the other. And the nice thing about these filters is when you change them, they don't hold the oil in them. So when you spin them off, they're upside down. They will not dump oil into the bilge. So it's very cool. Uh, there's a fuel filter under here, and there is a spare in the box I gave you. Uh, but when we change the fuel filters, it, I don't know if you can see it, Mike, but this filter here, this is another one of the, this is the primary fuel filter for the system. And basically to, to replace this, you just spin this wing nut off, this cap comes off, there's an element in here that has a little handle on it, just pop it right out of there. Have a little bucket or something ready for you, because it will drip fluid or diesel. And, you know, take a, a visual inspection of the fu of fuel in there to see if you got any contaminants. You can. And I guess those shutoffs, you hit the shutoffs before you do anything. You can. They, it really doesn't matter because they're not going to siphon. Okay. So you can just pull, you can just literally, I can unscrew it right now and take it off. Okay. And just take, pull the filter out. Look at the filter to make sure it's, you know, it's clean. And if you don't see any dark lines or anything on it, it's fine. Just put a new one in. There's a gasket in the top. The filter itself has a, a gasket on it, mm -hmm. and there's a little O-ring that goes on the bottom of that T. So I replace all those. It comes in the kit to replace all those, screw it back on. Fill, uh, I'm sorry, fill it with uh, diesel, screw this back on. Then you're going to get your oil filter wrench, and you're going to spin off the secondary filter, and that's under this black ring. So you'll unscrew this, just like you do an oil filter on your car. And same thing. What I always do... Um, is when I change a fuel filter, I got a white bucket poured in it. And I'm, gonna, I'm looking for moisture, contaminants, anything like that. Mm -hmm. That filter is going to tell me if it's got it because it holds it. And if you see it, now we've got to address the tank. But if you don't see anything, then you're going to put the fuel back in the, uh, the new filter, lubricate the seal, just like you do with an oil filter, and screw it back on there. Once you're all done with that, you still have a little air in the system. This is the primer for this diesel. 
yeah, basically what we're going to do is there's a, a pet cock here. You're going to take your wrench and crack that. You may want to bring a rag here just to catch the fluid, but you'll start pumping this. And when the air stops and the fluid starts, you crank that back down, and the baby's ready to go. Okay? So this is the antifreeze you fill right here. This is a permanent antifreeze. That's, uh, we, um, it's basically the same as you buy in the hardware stores, but we gave you a, uh, another gallon of the actual Volvo mix. This is our engine oil. You just unscrew that. That's where you fill the oil after the oil change. Um, and one more thing we'll point out while we're in here, talking about oil changes. Can you see this, Mike? I just pulled this cap off. That hose right there is where we suck the oil out of the engine. So all we do is we add our pump right onto this neural fitting and it will suck that fluid or the oil right out of the motor. You're all done, just make sure you put the cap back on. That's it. I can oil change this engine as fast as, if my pump will suck it out fast, I can have this whole thing done in less than a half hour. And that's fuel and oil. You know, of course, I'm rolling at that point. I got everything set up, I got the fuel, everything. <laughs> Chuck's in mode. All right, so that was pretty much it for the diesel. Um, there is the, the seawater pumps over there. I did give you a spare impeller. Um, Mike, I don't know if you can, you won't see it from there, but it, you have to go to the other side. This, you know, just off this serpentine belt is the seawater pump. This is bringing the lake water, I'm sorry, river water in, I'm on the river, uh, through and in through the heat exchangers. In here is an, a rubber impeller and season, uh, every few seasons you're going to need to replace that. It depends on how hard you use the boat, but they usually last about five years. Okay. okay? But it's a handy item to have because if you suck in something big and it stops the flow, you're going to lose a blade and you're not going to get good flow. You'll notice the engine alarms will come up, the temperature will start creeping up, and the boat's telling you something's wrong. Your first line of defense when that happens is the C strainer, the big brass one down here. Okay. You use, uh, you can use just a, a wrench, and you you see these two nubs at the top. Mm -hmm. You just turn off the through hole, which is right here, the green handle. Turn that perpendicular Show to the. Show me line. the through hole. I'm sorry. This line, this one right here, you're going to turn that off, which is going to be perpendicular to the line. That's okay. all. You got it. Yep. Okay. Now make sure you put it back on when you're done. But it's off. You take a wrench and you just spin this off. You don't even need a wrench, that one's loose. And that's where the, there's a basket in there that you're going to pull out. Can you touch that again? Okay. This is the uh, C strainer. You just release that, spin it off. There's a basket inside here that collects all the debris. And you just take it out of the dock, clean it out, shove it back down in there, turn the valve back on. It's no different than what you're used to do with your air conditioning mm -hmm. on the other boat. And segueing into air conditioning, I'm standing next to the air conditioning pump. There is this black and white pump here is a March seawater pump. And basically, it's a direct drive pump. It does not suck water, it just pushes it along. So you may run into every now and then a priming situation when you first go into the water. So basically what happens is, if you launch her, and you're not getting fluid through that pump, or she don't want to pump water overboard. You just grab this, spin it, until that water sprays out like that. Once it does that, and put, put it back down right. The water pressure on it. You got a lot of pressure in your lake, your, your creek. That just primed that system. It allowed the water to get up to here. Yep. Now that pump will um, take off. If it doesn't take off, if you still can't get water to go over the side, you know you got the pump switch on in there on that electrical panel, then you're going to need to open these wing nuts just a little bit and let a little water or air out of here. And once the water comes to that air, it has to work. But that pump maintains both air conditioning. And that switch and those we strainers? The strainers, this, um, again, that's air conditioning. This one is for the generator. Um, right back here. 
and basically the same thing. When that's uh, being used, you'll see that it's in motion. You'll see the, uh, that's the bilge pump. You'll see the generator uh, actually sucking the water through there. Same thing. So if you get into grass and you had all of this deployed, you're probably going to have to clean them all. Okay. Okay. So. And what's this strainer for to the down there? The big one? No, to the right. This one? This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the cockpit washdown pump. You have the, the one on the back end of the boat. Okay. That's for that. So, again, that's another, just another strainer. You probably will never have to clean that one. It doesn't get used that much. Mm -hmm. So, but they, they suck the water out of the lake. It's a nice feature because you can literally, uh, forgive me for saying lake, <laughs> forget I'm on a river. Um, you can literally come to the boat, hook your hose onto that fitting, and wash the boat with the river water. Okay? So, pretty much the, the engine in a nutshell, she's a pretty, a pretty fail safe motor. I've never had any real issues, where's the wood, <laughs> uh, with the motors, but they have been very, very reliable. You know, I just, I don't, I don't send a lot of boats far away, and I'm happy to see this one in Pittsburgh, because I know she's going to treat you well. <laughs>